Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. A little bit late. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at 5. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And we're here in the studio with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we're very excited for our guest today. Super talent. Super talent. Always good in everything. Always good in everything. <laughs> True stage star, though she's done a lot of TV and And now she's part of the amazing new company of To Kill a Mockingbird. Who's here? Lisa Gay Hamilton Woo! is That's with awesome. us. That's right. And we will talk to her shortly. But first, here's our top five. The Golden Globes were last night, and we are celebrating some Broadway stars who won a trophy. How, when, you know, it's so exciting to get to watch a live event with so many drunk, famous people, right? Correct. I mean, yes. they, they sit there, they get drunk through the are night. I'm names? not naming names. Oh, okay. Some of them said they were drunk. Uh, but, but let's talk about the, the, a lot of theater people were in the room. Yeah. Um, because this is the thing now. Theater people get to go to the Golden Globes you know, because they're getting... They know where the talent is. That's yeah, right. it's really exciting. So. And a bunch of them uh, walked home with awards. So let's talk about Michelle Williams, Michelle should we? Michelle Williams, a theater the, person who's a playing Broadway a theater person. Vet. Uh, yes, and of course, she won for Fosse Verdon, playing the great Gwen Verdon, which was such an amazing performance. She gave an incredible speech. Very political, mm -hmm. very moving. Incredible speech. Look it up. Um, and Tommy Kale was there, her new beau. And, her fiance. Uh, and, 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 and father yeah. of her. They're expecting. Yes. <laughs> it's very exciting to see Tommy Kale on the Golden Globes. Um, Brian Cox <gasps> won for uh, Succession. Of course, he was just on Broadway in The Great Society. Sam Mendes. So 1917 is Sam Mendes' new movie. And it had an amazing night. It ended yeah. up winning Best Motion Picture mm -hmm. Drama. Mm -hmm. it's kind of a surprise. It, it, it opened very late. It just... Hasn't even opened wide yet, so now mm -hmm. it gets to open wide with this amazing news. Uh, and he also won for directing, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, Renee Zellweger won for playing Judy Garland in Judy, uh, which of course based on a Broadway play and based on a Broadway legend. And Aquafina, mm -hmm. I just saw the farewell over the break. Have you seen it yet? Not it's yet. So tearjerker. Good. It's so. Good. It is so good, and both. I was so excited for her. But the Broadway hook is that she is currently filming the prom mm -hmm. for Netflix. So. Um, and it was also, of course, exciting to see Cynthia Erivo and Billy Porter oh, who yeah. were nominated. The and uh, Dina Menzel was in the yes, audience. Yes, she was. And anyway, it was a, a great night for a lot of fantastic people. So congratulations, winners and nominees. And Miguel is coming back to Broadway. Right. So we have <laughs> – just yelled that. Sorry for some reason. I'm really excited. Like Miguel Cervantes so excited. is coming back. <laughs> To Hamilton. He was in Hamilton Broadway. Then he was in the Chicago Company, which just closed last night. Mm -hmm. He's coming last back night, to yeah. Broadway. Yeah. Um, he's got a wonderful story. He's such a heartfelt, wonderful guy. And we don't have a date yet, an exact start date for him to come back to Hamilton on the Broadway. But part of his story is that he will replace Austin Scott, who's going into Girl from the North Country on Broadway. So mm -hmm. all the Hamilton talent, including Lisa Gay Hamilton, just throwing her in there, are... <laughs> Still on Broadway. <laughs> I didn't know why I did that. Um, <laughs> and of course, he had a, a, a tragedy oh uh, in the fall yeah. where he had the loss of his daughter, three-year-old daughter, Adelaide. And I just want to mention this because he's been such an advocate. His daughter had mm -hmm. epilepsy. and He went public with it. He went public with media. it, and they've been advocates for this... Um, this organization called Citizens United for Research of Epilepsy. It's mm -hmm. cureepilepsy.org. So you can learn more about their story and also donate if you choose to. I just wanted to throw that in there. But he's coming back to Broadway. Yeah. Such a talented guy. And Chicago loves him. They're going to miss him. Well, Chris Jones of the Chicago Tribune named him the Chicagoan of the year. And we're plucking and him so. back to New York. So take that, Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> and there's been some casting swap over at Take Me Out. Yeah, so Take Me Out is uh, Richard Greenberg's play about a bunch of baseball players. And um, some of them get naked, don't they? Yeah, that that's not the time. actual, You're like, nodding. that's not the plot. Though. I know. I've well, heard. no, the plot is that one of them comes out of the closet, and then Jesse Tyler Ferguson, what's his name, Mason, what's the character's name? Anyway, he does a great monologue about falling <laughs> in love with baseball. It's so good. Yeah. But the, there's, it's a big cast of very talented actors, and Will Harrison and Joel Perez were not were announced for it originally, but they have now left due to scheduling conflicts, and they've been replaced by Tyler Lanson Weeks and Edward, Eduardo, Eduardo Ramos. Um, Weeks was seen on Broadway in Macbeth six years ago, and he's been on a lot of TV shows. And Ramos will make his Broadway debut, so congratulations, um, uh, uh, Mr. Ramos. <laughs> We're just <laughs> waiting for you. <laughs> sorry. They're joining a cast including Jesse Williams, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, as I mentioned, Patrick J. Adams, um, Scott Ellis is directing, 
It all starts April 2nd. It's a really fantastic play, and I'm excited to see it again. I don't, you know, I remember really liking it, but I don't oh, really I remember, remember a lot of Oh, I remember loving it. I remember Dennis O'Hare's monologue. That's the monologue. That That's monologue what I remember. The amazing. monologue about a, yes, yeah, about a home run. You'll, you'll, anyway, you'll it's, see. A, it's a fun play. I'm excited <laughs> to see it again. And all the rumors have officially been confirmed. Okay, calm down, because the Music Man has a home, and it's at the Winter Garden Theater. It will Shocked. begin previews on September 9th and officially open on October 15th. We know that Hugh Jackman is starring as Harold oh, Hill. Oh, we do. Who we else? know that Sutton Foster oh, will be that's Mar exciting. Marion the Librarian, directed by Jerry Zaks, choreographed by Warren Carlyle. Lots of Tony winners in this mix. Jane Howdy Shell. Jane Howdy Shell, your Jefferson <laughs> Mazes, your Schuler Hensleys, et cetera, et cetera. So it's true. The Music Man will be at the Winter Garden Theater. And that's that. Mm -hmm. That is that. What else do we have going on, Paul? Uh, no, we got well, we one, one, one more story. story. Oh, I yeah, forgot. Story, Beth. Yeah, I'm sorry. One more new yes. story. Natalie Portman. <laughs> you like Natalie Portman? Well, we got all of them. Okay. <laughs> did you work on this, that? You worked on that. This is I not did. Natalie Portman in a play. It's a play called All the Natalie Portmans. Uh, it's a new play by C.A. Johnson at MCC Theater. And Tony nominee Montego Glover, who we love, will be leading the cast. And also Joshua Boone, uh, Elise Kibler, Renika Williams, and Kara Young. Well, Kara Young was here. Yes, um, she was. Live at Five uh, a couple months ago. And it focuses on 16-year-old Kayona, who is extremely close with her older brother Samuel and dreams of a better tomorrow. She escapes by writing to her muse or muses, Natalie Portman, in her most iconic roles. <laughs> When all the Natalie Portman start talking back to her, Kayona has to face her own off-screen drama. Ooh. Okay, I'm into this. Is this a I'm horror film? This. Or, I mean, Kate Oriski <laughs> is uh, directing it, and it starts previews February 6th at that beautiful new MCC theater it space. Is, it is pretty. And as you, as you mentioned, there are some other things happening. For example, yes. Erica Jane is now a Broadway star in yes, about a is. couple hours. Erica Jane of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Playing for you opposite. Bravo fans. Uh, uh, Paulo Zott. Zott. Paulo Zott. Paulo Zott, who of course Tony won a Tony winner. for uh, South Pacific. He is super talented. And who else is joining Broadway tonight? Tony Goldwyn is joining Tony The Goldwyn. Inheritance as John Benjamin Hickey leaves his post to That's go right. direct Sarah Jessica Parker yeah. and Matthew Broderick yeah, in which Plaza is, Suite. Which, which is starting up in Boston. And also mm -hmm. there's a great video on the site. Beth sat down with Laura Linney, mm -hmm. who is now officially back on Broadway, and my name is Lucy Barton. And you also yes. talked to the playwright and director. And the novelist. The novelist, right. Elizabeth Based Stroud. Novel. That's right. One woman show. One woman and, show uh, playing Laura lots Linney of Laura Linney told you she never thought she would do a one woman show. She likes to challenge herself. The last time she was on Broadway, she was swapping parts with Cynthia Nixon. Right. And now here she is playing all the parts. How many Tony nominations? She has four. That's a lot. Four. That's a Should lot. Should we get one more? You, anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> that's it for me. All right. Well, thank you for your service, Paul. Go thank take you. down your Christmas tree or whatever you're going to do. <laughs> And Caitlin, will you tell us a little bit about our guest today? Gladly. Yes, you guys, we have Lisa Gay Hamilton here with us in the studio today. She recently joined the company of Aaron Sorkins to Kill a Mockingbird, and she um, is now taking over the role of Calpurnia. She took over the role from original cast member Latanya Richardson Jackson. She's known for her screen credits. Um, she has appeared in The Practice, Men of a Certain Age, House of Cards. She earned a Peabody Award for creating and directing the 2003 documentary film Bia, A Black Woman Speaks. But, you know, she's no stranger to Broadway. This She has previously been seen in Gem of the Ocean and The Piano Lesson. Make sure you guys follow at Mockingbird b -way to stay up to date in all things that Lisa Gay and the cast over there at the Schubert Theater is doing. And everyone, leave all of your questions in the comments below. And please welcome Lisa Gay and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Yay. Welcome, Lisa Gay. How are you doing? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you. I love To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm. But tell me how you felt about taking on this role. Um, well, it had to be something that I really loved to leave my husband and two kids in California for seven months. <laughs> I would think so, yeah. <laughs> something that I was really, really eager to do. Um, I love this particular adaptation of the novel. I think Aaron Sorkin did a, a brilliant job in, um, certainly he didn't, um, contemporize it necessarily, mm -hmm. but has in a way by in particular giving Calpurnia voice in which she did not have in either the, the book necessarily or, or the movie. Right. It's like he didn't update it, but he has a contemporary eye. Do yes. you think that's correct? I think that's a way of looking at it. I mean, I, I think what he wanted to do and what he's done successfully is to demystify the uh, Atticus Finch being put on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's a sort story of humanizing him a little yes, bit. Yes, and and challenging his very idyllic idea of um, 
that we're all just really good, good people. Right. Maybe there are good people on both sides, according to this Atticus. Maybe. 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 <laughs> Maybe. So when I, I interviewed Latanya Richardson Jackson, who, who originated this role, and she said she wasn't sure if she wanted to take on the role of the maid, and that it was because of Erin's humanity toward her, giving her agency, giving her, fleshing her out a bit, mm -hmm. that she dug into it. Mm -hmm. So tell mm -hmm. me about that aspect of, of it for you. Um, I, I find Calpurnia to be extraordinarily rich. I think it's rare to find a character where there is a, an extraordinary wicked sense of humor. Mm -hmm. and also a depth and compassion and humanity all at the same time. So he really did develop a whole human being. Um, and that was what was so attractive about um, jumping in on those very large shoes I had to fill in. <laughs> you know, it's special, though, because so much of the cast turned over at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's, you all got to rehearse at the same time mm -hmm. and not just rehearse by yourself and then jump into a show that was already right. running. Right. So tell me about the rest of the cast and how you're working together. Um, I, I mean this sincerely that I love going to work every day. It's a company that I respect completely each and every person. It's a lot of sitting on stage and so you have to be alive and be part of the company and to watch my coworkers create every night is a real joy and we have a, a little special thing that there's a basically a wall that separates it, not a curtain, but a wall that separates the audience from the stage. So we're all in the back of the stage behind this wall, and we're just talking about life and love and how was your weekend and just <laughs> telling jokes, and, and then boom, the wall goes up and we're all there. And Go so into it. I really, really love working on the show, and, and I have to say I really did wanted to know who was going to be Atticus Finch. I was very particular about and you had to put up with them casting Ed Harris. I'm oh sorry my about God! That. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a dream. He's an absolute dream. You, you know, you he's really your stage partner in this, without question. So tell me about with some of your experiences with him. Well, what I love about Ed is that he is a stage actor. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is his background, and that is who he is. And so he brings that sentiment. Sen that sentiment. He brings that. Um, uh, conviction of the craft and the commitment to it and wanting to play each night. And so um, there's always a little comment we have, that was good, that was fun, that was fun, yeah, 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 that was good, that was fun. So each night trying to dig deeper and delve deeper and deeper into the relationship between the two people and also giving each other that space to create their own individual character as well. So I feel more than honored and it's a real treat to be with Ed Harris. Uh, it's one of the highlights of my career. Now when you said that he's a real stage actor, that sounds like the highest compliment. Do you, oh, you feel that truly. way? Oh, truly. Yeah? Truly. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a Juilliard alum, and I, I have to say I never really thought of being in film and television. Um, the theater has always been my, my dream and my love. Um, it's where the actor has control of the art. Um, and I get to hone in on that character each day, each day, each performance. It's very different than film and television, obviously, where you're coming in in the middle, you don't mm -hmm. really know if you're starting from the beginning or the end and how you're doing it, and da-da-da-da. Um, so I do take it as a, a high compliment that... So the first time actor. I saw you on stage, I'm going to date myself here, the first time I saw you on stage was in Measure for Measure. Oh my God. At the Delacorte Theater. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time, Park. Ago. It's a long time ago. I'm very old. <laughs> I just look really young for my age. But what that's a cast funny. you had then. Mm -hmm. And I think of you as someone who really can dig into language, whether it be Shakespeare or August Wilson. Mm. Tell me about those experiences, especially the piano lesson and working with August Wilson, Gem of the Ocean. Um, the piano lesson was my, there's something you call a spear carrier it's in the mm -hmm. park, your first job. So right. my, my, my first job out of school was a spear carrier in the park. And it was with, it was in uh, Twelfth Night with Mary Elizabeth Mastro Antonio, mm -hmm. Jeff Goldblum, John Amos, and you were somewhere in the background. And, and, and all of the other alums <laughs> from the various programs were in the back holding this room. And so that was my first gig. And so my second gig was the piano lesson. And it's um, an upgrade. I, it is an upgrade. And I had dreamt of going to Yale. Love you, Juilliard. But I had dreamt. I just thought, and in particular because of Lloyd Richards. I mm -hmm. could think of no greater human being on the planet at that time was Lloyd Richards and really, really wanting to work with him. And then understanding August's work was really coming to light then. And I was devastated when I didn't get in. So that when I had the opportunity to actually um, audition for him, that in itself. But old Meg Simon was a... Uh, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. remember Meg? Mm -hmm. She's still around. And so I... Um, the treat of that 
was to be with Essie Patham Merkerson and mm -hmm. the late Tommy Hollis, uh, the late uh, Carl Gordon, Rocky Carroll, um, I'm missing some others, forgive me, uh, Lou Myers, and um, to sing, to see them watch, to see, to see them sing Berta Berta every night mm -hmm. was traumatic <laughs> and dramatic. <laughs> it was just, it was just inspiring to see those actors work. So Grace was a very, very tiny role. So I really felt like I got a, a another degree after I right, left master Juilliard. Class. Oh boy, oh boy, was <laughs> it? It was a, a real master class. So being able to um, be as lucky as I have been to be in all kinds of different eras of theater, um, I feel very lucky to have done that. So, All right, I want to ask you about something else because I was looking at your resume. What was your very first film? Crush, Grew. Wait, that thank is you what for, I thought Thank you, you for say. mentioning yeah, that. You're welcome. Yeah. Let's talk about what, <laughs> describe to the people. Let's educate the people. Well, you know, you know, <laughs> See, we're thank getting some you. applause from the room. Claire <laughs> Underwood you. starred in that, who's getting ready to come to Broadway right. in Soldier's Play. So um, uh, it was, it's rather an iconic film. It's a classic. <laughs> it is yes, it in is. the it's in classic. the in the rap community. It's one of the first rap films, and it had the uh, Fat Boys, and Curtis Blow, and Sheila E, um, and Run DMC. And I was such a Long Island girl that and suburban that I had no idea who Run DMC <laughs> <laughs> or the Fat Boys. Mm -hmm. Had never heard of them. Didn't know who they were. So it was a real great quick education for me. But it was a treat. Michael Schultz ended up working on with a practice with on a number of occasions, and he directed a couple of episodes. So. That was my big claim to fame. We are showing off your range today. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, my we're God. We're showing it all off. <laughs> all right, we're going to take your questions. But first, I want to ask you about preparing for Madison Square Garden. February 26th, To Kill a Mockingbird is going to the big house. Yes. A truly big room. A truly big room. <laughs> Isn't it just amazing So it's like you're a basketball player that? suddenly. Oh, boy. I think, you know, we're all being kept in the dark because we really don't know how we're doing it. So I can't really give you a lot of information because we don't even know. I think the date is February. We're going to really project. <laughs> yes, we're going to really project. And I think they're making it like a runway type. So maybe two set. sides. So two sides, very distinct. So you're not moving too many sets. Mm -hmm. And I think we just walk. Back and forth. And a play is, has a play ever been done at Madison Square Garden? Like never. No, never. So this is never. This is and it's a play. And it's a play a, with a lot of words. And a play for kids. And for kids, it's been on a syllabus since it was published. And so Everybody I'm, knows I'm this thrilled book. that you know school kids will be able to come to see this play. And, it's and exciting. It's it, we're all very we're all very excited. This is as about close it. as a rock concert as you can be, <laughs> and when you're in a play. <laughs> And not singing. Exactly. This is not Crush Groove either. That's not, totally it's different not thing. Crush Groove. It is not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Caitlin, let's get to our viewers' questions. Are they really asking questions? They really yeah. are. Of course they are. We are live. People are asking oh, questions. Oh, we're <laughs> live at five. Amazing. Yeah. All right, so this is actually great because going out, we had a question about Crush Groove. I knew it. So, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Christian Come wants on. to know the, this is my favorite breakdancing movie. Can you share any memories of filming that that you still love? And do you still have your pop and lock moves? Um, no, I didn't have my <laughs> pop and lock moves then, nor do I have them now. Um, not my forte. Um, probably my uh, favorite moment was uh, Michael Schultz saying to me that I had to hang out with the Fat Boys for a day or two because he wanted me to get to know him. How'd that go? Really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to kiss a Fat Boy too. I did. I had to get. I had to kiss Prince. Close. Prince. Yeah. Had to. <laughs> it, 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 trust me, they paid me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, so other question is, Janie wants to know, what was your first experience with To Kill a Mockingbird? Was it, did you see the movie? Did you read the novel growing up? What was your first um, experience with it? For me, it was actually the movie first. Mm. And um, I remember being petrified. And I remember in particular when Boo Radley is um, presented to the, to the screen audience, I, I have screamed. Because no. it was really scary that this kid, this guy, was standing behind the door, and so that's my first real memory of uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Did you go see the previous cast before you took on um, the role? I waited until the very last minute. I wasn't going to, and then I decided to, I wanted to see Bart's work in particular, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. how the play moved. Everyone spoke about that, um, and I did at the very, very last minute. I did the last week that they were um, closing. I did go see it. I was. Very happy to, to see, be in the audience and see that company do the play. What is it like to take over a role like this? Did you talk to Latanya, or did you just no. separate? Did Bart let you make it your own? And I mean, how did that? That was actually my, that my first question when I got cast. I was like, "Look, I'm not interested in repeating in a performance that's already been done. That would be silly. You could get anyone to do that. So it must be because you want me to bring my own sensibility and my own um, 
interpretation of this character. Mm -hmm. So I think Bart did a brilliant job in um, really um, being staying committed to individual actors in the play and what they brought to the table. We certainly couldn't reinvent the wheel. It had to move a certain way. Right, the blockings and, there. And he was like, mm, we're not really sure we're going to change too much lighting cues for you divas necessarily. <laughs> But in terms of the emotional track and what movements may fit better in your body than another, he was very, very, uh, girl, he came, he came to the uh, play the other night with, to take notes, to wow. take notes. So I have the utmost respect for Bart, the, the utmost. I, I think he's an extraordinary director. He keeps it on track. Oh boy, does he ever. He I really love does. that. All right, so Diane wants to know, do you think about Copernia's backstory and are you inspired by any women in your life when you went into creating and making this character your own? Um, that's a really great question. Um, I think there are many, many, and I'm not going to be able to name them right now, forgive me, um, African-American women and women of color who have been in the forefront of social justice. Mm -hmm. And so I really do see Calpurnia is as, as that. I'm, I probably think of my grandmother most. She was a member of the community. who My grandfather, believe it or not, was a dentist. And so the family had a certain stature. And um, she would hide people. She would help people. Oh. Um, so this sense of what is right um, and standing up for truth, I, I view that with all of the women in my family. But I think of all of the women before me historically who who have fought, I think of them every night. I and Calpurnia has such a strong moral compass. Very much which so. Which she's trying to I, I, share I, with the I, children. I view her as a very um, popular and strongly committed woman within her own community, mm -hmm. and that, um, that she knows everyone, and, yeah. everyone, and everyone knows her. And so um, she, she's not an individual. She's a community. She's many people. Um, and I like that concept that I've created about her. That's beautiful. I That's love that. Beautiful. Okay, we have time for one more question, Caitlin. All right. Yes. So, so Marlene wants to know how does it? What has the audience reaction been like for you guys? You know, we were talking a little bit when we first came in here, but what has that been like for you? And how does it feel to get that audience reaction coming in with the whole new cast and all of that? Um, what's so important about the audience is that they also educate the actor about the play. You know, mm -hmm. what works, what doesn't work. Um, a friend came to the play the other, and gave me a wonderful compliment. He said, your timing is great. And I said to him, well, I could never have that if it weren't for the audience. Right. I, I learned that from them, what works and what doesn't work. So my, my sister said, really? Standing ovations every night? Really? And I go, really? <laughs> 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 every night? <laughs> Which is amazing. <laughs> Which is really amazing when you think about it. You know, mm -hmm. There might be one or two who won't give it up in the front row. <laughs> and we're always looking at them. So if you're in the front row and not standing, we're checking you out. <laughs> that you don't stand. <laughs> That's a good lesson to learn. You know, the actors can see you. Oh, yeah. Broadway. They're yeah, looking back. Do. You see the yawns every once in a while. <laughs> you see the laughs. You see the whole thing. Well, thank you for coming. Oh, thank you so much and for having me. If you me. haven't seen To Kill a Mockingbird, you need to get yourself to the Schubert Theater or Madison Square Garden on uh. February 26th. Although probably the Schubert Theater will be easier. <laughs> Caitlin, will you take us on out, please? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today for our very first Live at Five of 2020. We are Live at Five every single weekday here on Facebook, and you can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Tam Mutu of Moulin Rouge.